Hey guys, welcome back. I just realized that like, I don't even have earrings in or anything. We're super casual today. Um, I've just applied like <laughs> super long talons, so there's no way I'm getting earrings in right now. I do not know how people function with these. Um, yeah, they look pretty. I, I don't know how people live with these. As you saw from the titles, today we're going to talk about some products that I have used up. Let's do this. I will forewarn you, there's not an awful lot of makeup here. It is a mixed bag of items, but because I have a rather extensive collection, I find that it is very difficult to use up entirely a makeup product because I, I have more than one of any given option, basically. Uh, so there is some makeup, but for the most part it's just a random assortment of stuff that I have used. So we're going to go through it as quickly as I can, because there is quite a bit here. I'll give you just a few pros, cons, whatever, and then we'll just move on. And then I can get them out of my house. Yay! All right, so um, let's start with the makeup items that I do have, and then I'll try to organize them in terms of some sort of category so this makes sense. So one of the first makeup items that has been used completely is my pressed Fit Me powder from Maybelline. It is completely empty. This one was in the shade 115 Ivory. I did repurchase it. I repurchased one shade up, 120, and I will likely keep repurchasing it. I have just very recently hit pan on that pressed shadow. That's pretty much the only makeup item that I have that I only have one of, is one pressed shadow, and or pressed powder, and I just keep repurchasing the Maybelline Fit Me because if it ain't broke, why fix it? So, there you have it. Another powder product that I've been able to use completely is from Urban Decay. It's the Naked Skin Ultra Definition Powder Foundation in Light Neutral. And she is completely empty. And from what I can tell, they no longer make this. Or I would repurchase it. I'm sure I can find it on sort of like online retailers that aren't Sephora, um, but they tend to charge a lot of shipping and whatnot, and frankly, I don't care that much to replace it. Like, I was really heartbroken when I went to replace it initially and couldn't find it, but I do have others that I'm working on, and it's fine. Uh, but I really did like this one, and if they brought it back, I would definitely repurchase it. I have a sample of the Becca Velvet Blurring Primer Perfecting Base. I went through about four or five of these. I have bought the smaller mini version, and then the full size went on sale for the price of the smaller mini version, so I bought one of those as well. So, needless to say, I love this primer. Love it, love it. And in fact, this has kind of given me the idea because, just one second, this bag here is full of samples that I have tried over the course of the year. And there's some like single-use face masks and things like that in there as well. So I'm not including these in this video, but what I thought I would do rather than go through like 100 samples or whatever's in there and show you each and every individual one um, is really look at the ones that stood out to me and the samples like this that made me go out and purchase the full size. So I'm going to go through there and see what's what and that will be the subject of a separate video at some point. So not today. All right. Another sample, the Shock Mascara from YSL. Mm, it's so good, it's so good, and it's so expensive, and for that reason, I have not repurchased it. If I was feeling particularly spendy one day, or if it went on some significant discount, I would snap it up in an instant, but I have a very hard time spending $40 on a mascara, particularly given the fact that I have like 17 mascara samples plus other full sizes. It is not a priority right now. There's the brush for it. It reminds me very much of the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. I just really liked the mascara. It didn't clump anything up. It added a ton of volume to my lashes. It was beautiful. It smells nice. I just really liked it, but the $40 price point makes me choke and I just don't see myself purchasing that at any time in the foreseeable future. 
Um, I mentioned this one in a video once upon a time. It is the Becca Under Eye Brightening Setting Powder and I hated this. I did use it all, but I did not enjoy it whatsoever. Yes, it set things under my eyes. Mm, didn't really see that it was all that brightening. My problem mainly with it was that it was so finely milled that it just plumed everywhere. It would be all over my shirt. I would like unintentionally snort it and it would actually hurt. Like if I inhaled through my nose, it hurt. So I had to like do the slow exhale while I was applying it and then wave my hands. Like it was just, it was, it, I didn't like it. I don't like when my makeup assaults me basically. So not repurchasing that. Okay, I've got a setting spray. This is the Insta Fix and Go from Rimmel. It's a two-in-one primer and setting spray. Do not like it as a priming spray. Really like it as a setting spray. And it's got a really nice cucumbery smell to it. It doesn't leave that like sticky feeling. It doesn't make your face feel like, like sometimes it just makes your skin feel tight after you apply it. That didn't do it. I would consider repurchasing this one. I thought it really did work nicely and it has a very nice fine mist. So it is one that I would consider repurchasing. I've also got a mini Fix Plus here. There's still a little bit at the bottom, but I can't get it out. So we're calling it done. This was the lavender scent, which I didn't enjoy all that much. I have a coconut and a rose one. Those two, mm, so good. Lavender I normally like the smell of, but not on this one, so I use this for setting, um, for spraying shadows, like shimmery shadows, when I wanted them to appear more foiled. So it took a long time to get through this, just using it on that basis, but I managed to finish it, so done. I don't know that this really qualifies as makeup. It was a lip balm from Rimmel, one of the Kate ones, just in shade 01. It was just a clear lip balm. There it is there. It did take me quite a while to get through it, but... It had a really nice scent to it. It didn't last an overly long time on the lips. Like it's not something that I would use at night, but it did, like I did carry it in my purse. This is what I took to the hospital with me when I had Bennett a year and a half ago. Um, and so when I was in the hospital, which I find quite drying, this was my go-to and it just kind of sat on my little bedside table there. Um, I don't know that I'll repurchase it. Like I'm not fussy with lip balms and I have a ton of them just floating around. So I'm not in a hurry to repurchase it. I think there's better on the market. This one was okay. It wasn't terrible, but there's definitely better on the market. I have another sample. This is the Hydra Life Micellar Water No Rinse Cleaner from Dior. And I, I loved it so much. It was so good. It really did get the makeup off, but it just, I really liked it because of how it made my skin feel. It made my fit, skin feel so hydrated and so soft and nice that it really made me want to buy everything in their Hydra Life collection. Um, but the full price micellar water was like $50. And no, no, I'm not spending $50 on something that just takes makeup off. <laughs> like, I'm just not doing that. Um, so as much as it was nice, you know, if I saw it in like a hundred point perk, held the yeah, um, but I'm not paying that much for micellar water. Another product that removes makeup are the Neutrogena wipes. Um, I got mine in this case and then within the case there was the little thing. It's the all-in-one makeup removing cleansing wipes. People rave about them. I do not like them. I find that the cloth itself gets really dry before you even manage to get everything off. I find that it's not overly effective. It can make the skin under my eyes sting and I just really don't like them. I don't like the way my skin feels after I use them. I am like a Kirkland wipes for life kind of girl. I buy 150 at a time from Costco for like $19.99 and they are fantastic. So I will not be repurchasing the Neutrogena wipes. Another item that I took to the hospital with me was from Too Cool for School. This is the Coconut Milky Mist. And it's just a nice little facial spray that really does add a lot of moisture back into your skin. And I mean, it's one of those products that now the scent of it is nostalgic for me because I used it so much, like especially when Bennett was in his newborn stage. And then, so, like, obviously I've been amassing some of these empties for quite some time. 
but I did use it up within this year, despite the fact that he was born in 2017. Uh, but I can't find this one anymore except on, I think Beauty Bay has it, but it has it at a price that I'm not willing to pay. Uh, so if it came back to Sephora, I would definitely buy it again. But right now I'm using one that I found at Winners. If you're American, I don't know if you have Winners. Winners is like basically the sister brand of Marshalls. We have both of them up here, so you might have it. Anyways, I found another coconut water face mist. This one is $8 from a brand called Pearlescence. It's not as nice as the Too Cool for School one, but it's totally functional and I, I can live without the other one. A face spray that I wouldn't repurchase is from Ren. This is the Flash Defense Anti-Pollution Mist. I don't know. I have an office job. I don't know how big a deal pollution is for me. Like, I'm not... I don't know. I don't know. Educate me down below, please. Feel free. Um, but I just in my day-to-day -day life, I don't feel that pollution is like my number one going concern. Uh, so I would not buy this. I think, did I buy this? I don't remember ever buying it. Maybe it was like a beauty offer through Sephora. I don't know, but I wouldn't buy the full size of it because I don't really see the point, frankly. Another product that I wouldn't buy again because I don't really see the point, and I'm sorry, Bosha, because I love your products, but the Saki, Sake, Saki, oh, fucking, I don't know how to say it, Saki Treatment Water to Hydrate and Brighten. Um, there's a few problems with this. So, yes, it did hydrate my skin, so I would use this, like, after I got out of the shower, before I used toner or anything like that, I would go in with this. But if you can see... <laughs> the spout is pointed upwards so and then it's got like obviously like the little straw that goes down to the bottom so you go like this and it goes bloop, and it's like way over your hand but if you go like this it can't get any product up so it was a right pain in the ass to use and you can't like take the lid off so like I couldn't just twist it and like pour a little bit onto a cotton pad or anything so it was frustrating to use I don't know that it's a necessary step because if you just go in with your toner, whatever, um, serums, all that kind of good stuff, then you really don't need this. So I don't know why I bought it. I really do like Bosha products for the most part, but this one just was a pain in the ass to use uh, and I just don't see any major benefit to it. I finished a rollerball. I finished the uh, Chloe Roses rollerball and... I now only have two left to use up. I hate rollerballs. I like that they are only like $25 and you get a fair amount of product in there. You can really test out a scent to see if you really like it, but I don't like how like gross and murky they get by the time you get down to the bottom. And so I'm not buying any more rollerballs. I only have two left, like I said. So I was very happy to finish one up. I really do like this scent, um, but when I bought my annual perfume using my Shoppers Drug Mart points. I went for Chloe Love Story, although I might consider get Chloe getting Chloe Roses next year. Maybe, we'll see. Deodorant, uh, secret clear gel, completely clean scent. I just keep buying this over and over and over again. I really like it because it is like the twist up gel formula and it's clear, it doesn't like get that white stain on anything. It doesn't make my white shirts yellow in the armpits and it keeps me smelling very good unless I have like a really stressful day at court and then I get stress sweat and ain't nothing stopping stress sweat. Like it's not happening. Um, so while I like the idea of like natural deodorants, I also really like the idea of not smelling and I have not found a natural deodorant that does anything except make me feel like I'm not giving myself cancer. So, secret for the win, I've been using it since I was like 11, and I will very likely continue to keep on using it forever. Okay, L'Oreal Root Cover Up in the shade Dark Brown. I love this stuff, well, I don't love it. I like how well it covers up the gray. I like that. I don't like, it's almost like sticky, and then if you like run your hand on it, it will smudge off, so I don't like that. If you know of a product like this that doesn't have those nasty side effects, please let me know um, because the grays are coming in fast, my friends. 
Um, I'm very grateful that the wrinkles are kind of holding at bay, the forehead looks good still, the eyes holding up, uh, but the grays give me away and they are relentless little buggers. So let me know down below what you recommend. We're just gonna round it up with hair products. So the label's off of this, but it's the Neutrogena Anti-Residue Shampoo in the like mama jumba friggin' size here. It's massive. It took me forever to get through this, like forever, um, because it's not something that I used like every day. Um, so, okay, so it got my hair clean, it did. It got my hair too clean. So if I had dyed it, it would strip the color out of it. So that's part of the reason why it took me forever to use it because I would only use it very sparingly and only when I felt like it had been too long since I'd done like a super deep clean. So I wouldn't buy this one again. I don't know that I would buy another anti-residue one because I dye my hair so frequently now. Um, Yay, getting older is awesome. Uh, but it, if you're looking for value, this thing was like $6 and lasted like two years. So there is that, but it wasn't my favorite. It also, oh, oh, piss, whatever. It also smelled like, boy, like men's deodorant or something. It had a very spicy scent to it that didn't, wasn't what I was looking for first thing in the morning. I like like citrusy scents or something like that. And it was just too, Spicy. I don't know that I don't that's probably weird. I don't know Last one is a Tresemme spray gel. This is the curl defining Spray gel. Is that what it's called? I don't know. There's a lot of words on here Flawless curls. I fucking I don't know. I don't know what the name is or what the description is of the product. I have no idea We're just gonna call it the curly haired spray gel This is probably like my sixth bottle of this like I go through this like it's going out of style. And it's normally like $10 at Shoppers Drug Mart and they'll often have it down on sale for like $4 and then I will buy an extra one because I know I go through it so often and I just, I really enjoy it. It's, like I said, it's a spray gel so it does have that hold that you're looking for without being super crunchy, without making your hair look like it's like permanently wet, anything like that. Um, so it is a product that is a staple in my rotation and my hair care routine such as it is. Okay, so those are the products that I have used up over the last while and I look forward to using more up. I do have some that are, they're getting down there. They're getting to the point where it's getting like exciting, um, but they're not done yet. So once I have amassed another bunch of them, I will film another one of these videos, maybe like six months time or so. Uh, I don't know how people do monthly ones, like I honest God don't know, but unless you wanted to see like the empty bread bag or something like that, like I just don't generate that, that number of empties. So good on them, I can't match it. But like I said, I am gonna go through those samples and take a look and see what the standouts were either from a positive perspective or even a negative perspective, because I know there are likely some in there that I just never finished um, for whatever reason. So as I go through them, hopefully my memory will jog. So I'll wrap it up here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I will see you in my next video. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.